First of all, let's actually disable C state support, Intel speed shift, and AMD cool and quiet. These all power savings modes basically slowing down your PC by so much, so therefore let's turn them off. What you gotta do in the first place, guys, is go into your BIOS, and for that, you just need to restart your PC, and then it always says on the bottom of your screen, press F12 or something like that to get into the BIOS. It's always a little bit different depending on from which brand your motherboard actually is. Now I'm gonna show you in your BIOS directly how you can disable two of the most important power savings modes, which are slowing down your PC performance and all of that. And the first one which we're going to do guys is C state support. Once you're in your BIOS, you're gonna make sure that you actually go under advanced mode guys. That is super important. Other than that, you won't find it. You cannot be on the easy mode because there it's like the normal menu and advanced is like, of course, where like all these small settings are. And once you're in here guys, what you wanna look for is advanced CPU settings. This is gonna be called maybe a little bit different on your BIOS depending which manufacturer you have for me it's gigabyte because once we actually go into this you can see we have so many more options guys and the first one which we want to find actually is c states it should be called exactly c states that we got it already here on the bottom it's the same for intel and amd it's going to be called something like c states control or support or something like that you actually want to make sure to put this one on disabled you're asking yourself why well it's a power savings mode which basically enables if your cpu is in idle which means when you maybe don't do as heavy demanding actions on your pc it's gonna actually slow it down and this causes wake up latency because when you then launch a game and stuff like that it needs to go again up to its full potential so therefore we want to make it more active which is going to give us less latency so therefore you want to actually disable the c state control on your cpu then we're going to go all the way up here again until we can find intel speed shift or amd cool and quiet guys it's either one of these here there we got it here on the top already, Intel Speed Shift Technology. And this one you also want to make sure to disable. As mentioned on MD, it's called Cool and Quiet. You can find it directly in the same menu as well under your CPU settings. They both do exactly the same thing. Speed Shift Technology basically gives you a dynamic change for performance, which means again that if your CPU is maybe not as needed as of right now, it's going to clock it down a little bit. And once you then do more demanding tasks, it's going to go up again. These are as mentioned both power savings modes, which you want to disable for your PC performance and for gaming and all of that. So therefore, we're going to disable this for more consistent performance. Make sure that it's selected here under disabled click under OK and then all you got to do is click here real quick under safe and exit and then you can see safe and exit setup and you're back in your normal windows. So let's talk about one of the most important tweaks a lot of people are actually missing out which is setting up the right XMP profile. What I want to say with this is that a lot of people actually don't get the RAM speeds they're actually paying for especially if you built your PC yourself and you didn't really like check any of the BIOS settings or if you maybe got a pre-built chances are that your RAM is actually not running at the highest speed. You are missing out on important cast latency, band with speed for video editing and all of that. For me as an example, when I built my PC, my RAM was running only at 6000 megahertz, but actually it could go up all the way to 7200. So therefore, let me show you how to do this. First of all, what you gotta do is actually restart your PC and get into the BIOS. Once we're in the BIOS itself, this is most likely how it's going to look like for you. And I'm gonna show you now in the first place, we actually need to go from easy mode to advanced mode. Once you're in here, guys, you're gonna make sure that you go under tweaker. As mentioned, I can only showcase this right now here for gigabyte, but it should look somehow similar for you because most of the biases actually have like a tweaker or like a tweaking or advanced mode section. So therefore you're gonna find it. Other than that, you have to Google it maybe a little bit. But once we're in here now, guys, we wanna make sure that we find DDR5 XMP booster or anything which says XMP profile. That is super important. This is what we're looking for. So therefore, once we click onto it, you can now see we have a bunch of data here on the right side as well, right? You can see that my module is from Corsair, basically. The main company who produced this is Hynix, which is a Korean company, if I remember this right. Um, you can see all the frequencies and all of that you can see the voltage we can see my frequency at the moment 7200 and basically once you click onto this you got a bunch of presets i'm going to show you it's going to look a little bit confusing so therefore don't be worried you're going to have a bunch of numbers but let me explain this you're going to understand this literally in one minute we can see already that my producer company is called hynix right for my ram so therefore all the other ones micron samsung whatever is here in this list this is a very long list they don't matter we're just going to look for hynix the next step i know that my ram's maximum speed is 7200 200 megahertz. So therefore, I'm gonna look at the 7200 ones. You can see, oh, there's one as well. I, at the moment, run 48 gigs of RAM, but this is only showcasing for one single RAM. So therefore, what is half of 48? Of course, 24. So I already know, okay, 7200 with 16 gigs falls apart. 
that's not what we care about. Mine is gonna be 24. So if you're running 64 gigs of RAM, you're gonna look for 32. You guys get it, half of the RAM which you currently have. Then you have the cast latency, which for me is 36, 46, 46, and yeah, on and on, and the voltage which this XMP profile at the moment uses. So therefore, all you gotta care about is that you get the maximum megahertz, that you get exactly half of your RAM speed, and the matching cast latency, which you can, by the way, also find out if you just simply Google it. But as mentioned, this is exactly the XMP profile which I need. So Therefore, I'm gonna make sure that I select this one here, of course, which I already did. And then you can see the right XMP profile is here already enabled and you don't really have to do much more besides this. Then all you gotta do is save and exit, save and exit setup, and you're already good to go. And of course, guys, the most important part is as well your ping. This is why you see FNCS winners like Mero, Asian Jeff, and many more pros use Jira Booster. The best part is with my link in the description, you can actually try it out for absolutely free, guys. Jira Booster is gonna look for the best DNS server in your near, always making sure that you have the lowest and most stable ping. Even if you already have really good ping guys it's still worth it because it's gonna make it way more consistent the jet booster is gonna actively in the background search for the best dns servers always making sure that you have the best connection to fortnite as mentioned check it out for absolutely free with the link in the description guys and what we're going to need for this step guys is the nvidia profile inspector which you can better we get from the link in the video description guys the latest version 2.404 just simply click on the nvidia profile inspector and it's gonna get you the zip file the next up we're going to double click click on the yes and launch the tool itself and you can see we have a bunch of more options in here than actually even in the official NVIDIA tool or the NVIDIA control panel and that's why you're gonna use this. Now you could theoretically apply this for a global profile but I would rather recommend you to do this for Fortnite specifically so therefore search up Fortnite so that it even says here in green now Fortnite client Windows 64 shipping exit and it's completely green. First of all make sure that you find yourself all the G-Sync options and make sure that all of them are completely turned off just like for me. Off, disallowed, forced off and then off. Then for your maximum pre-rendered frames guys this one actually can give you so much less input delay if you use it on one. Now, now the downside to this is it's a lot more hardware demanding so therefore depending on how strong your pc is you might actually utilize one or then use free application settings if you're on a weaker pc for me personally since i'm on a stronger build i actually appreciate having a lot less input delay even though with reducing my fps by a tiny bit so therefore you gotta try this out yourself preferred refresh rate of course on the highest available guys then vertical sync you want to actually completely turn off guys this is what i did here as well for smooth afr behavior this one also completely turn it off then you have fxa enabled this one you want to put to off and also the preferred by nvidia option you're gonna put to disallowed the next up anti-aliasing transparency multi-sampling you're gonna put on disabled and the same with transparency super sampling on off slash multi-sampling anti-aliasing msaa mode you're gonna put to application control because these here you always want to set up directly in fortnite and anti-strophic filter optimization you want to put on on and filter sample optimization as well on on these modes are basically gonna make sure the textures appear even lower quality guys so therefore you want to utilize these and of course texture filtering quality you want to actually put all the way up to high performance and trillionaire optimization you're gonna put to on as well and all you gotta do is apply changes real quick and now you already get the best settings the next up what we're going to do is use both of these tools here which i basically wrote completely myself which are going to help you to disable most of the unnecessary windows services from your pc especially something like windows search nowadays works a lot more with soda set ai they give you like all these internet recommendations and all of that straight up which is pretty hardware demanding out of all these services windows search is definitely the most hardware demanding one but of course you gotta keep in mind your search results might be a lot worse now out of this but i'm not gonna lie i don't really care about this for me i have this turned off and it even says like a small description on the right side this is how i made this tool and as well here can disable as well here tablet input services which is like a touch keyboard and handwriting panel like you can see a bunch of stuff which you really don't need so therefore all you gotta do guys is press one here on this and you can see now everything is being now successfully actually applied and the coolest part about this tool is that you even have a revert button to default settings so therefore if you want to revert it you can just simply type in there too and and you're good to go. I just want to say that all of these tools here are completely open source. I made them completely myself. You can see everything which is in here. And you basically watching this YouTube video is my payment, I would say. Just making sure that you guys can see, like, obviously there's nothing in there. And then also something like the clean cache tool, which is going to help you to clean up temporary files in the first place. Then you can do something like memory dump files, which you can also clean. Mine are already empty. And Windows delivery optimization files, we can also clean with this one here. Should also only be taking a couple of seconds. And even DirectX shader cache, which is super important to clean 
clean once in a while. So therefore, guys, you get everything in this tool. You can even clear specific browser cache for Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Opera GX, and Brave. I really cooked with this tool, guys. And as mentioned, yeah, basically my payment for this is that you guys are watching this. Uh, by the way, the main reason why I actually put this into a bad file and not actually into a PS1 exit is because it would give me a false report. And I'm going to post it onto my official Discord.gg slash the stripes, 130,000 plus members, guys. You can also search it up here on the right side and find it as well. And I'm going to upload it after this video. Next up, guys, we're going to need a tool which is going to be called Process Hacker. This one is going to showcase you exactly how much CPU power, RAM, and all of that all these applications and tools on your PC are actually taking. It's way more described than in the task manager, so therefore I highly recommend you this one. You can find the link to it as well in the video description. And once you basically get it, what I want you to do is basically check out which of your applications actually take a lot of your CPU power, because Fortnite is mostly CPU bound. For me, you can see right now my OBS actually takes almost half a percenter. Then you can see something like Steam taking quite a lot, and just a whole bunch of services. Something here as well, like my um, Epoch cam, which is basically for my face cam. So therefore, what you could theoretically do is go through this list here real quick, make sure to see like, oh yeah, my Steam is taking like 315 Mbits of RAM. Also, if you're like struggling with RAM, this is like a great tool to just like overall see like, okay, yeah, what do I need to actually like turn off in order to game properly? Once we're done with that, we're going to utilize the MSI Mode Utility V3, which you can also find, by the way, in the video description, guys. And the coolest part about this is that we can actually swap over to the MSI Mode, which is basically a faster communication mode between your CPU and your GPU, ensuring lower system latency. All you guys gotta make sure is that you find your GPU here on the left side, and then under supported modes, it should say MSI. If you have a GPU from like the last decade, I would say, it's definitely gonna support this. And all you gotta do is put the small check here under the left side under MSI. Then under interrupt priority, you can either choose normal or high. There's people on both sides commenting that one of these is better. For me personally, I've set it always to high and it worked really, really good. I have basically zero input delay when it comes down to Fortnite. And then all you gotta do is click on apply and you're good to go and you can already delete the tool since it's only a one-time application tweak. Next up guys, what's also pretty important is having the right power plan. For me, I use a custom one, the Atlas OS one. But for most of you out there, if you're on a low to mid-end PC, you gotta utilize high performance. This one is going to work the best for you. If you're on a stronger PC, definitely utilize the automated performance one. That way you can ensure that your CPU is actually being fully utilized for Fortnite. And if it's not available for you, all you gotta do is search up the CMD in your Windows search, run it as administrator. And in this window, you gotta post in the following code, which is gonna be in the video description. And then afterwards, it should be unlocked here in your power options menu. Make sure that it's applied fully, guys. And then you can close this and we're good to go with this step. And of course, guys, the easiest way to boost the FPS in Fortnite as well is to work around with your 3D resolution. For me personally, I would say anything until 40% is still totally playable. If I was playing on my low end laptop with like integrated Vega 7 graphics, I usually put it to 70% 3D res. And of course, this is the best way to boost your FPS because the game is going to render a lot easier. And you can see it still looks pretty decent in my opinion. Of course, another method would also be applying a stretch resolution. And luckily for you, I just made a video recently about the top five best stretch resolutions, but I also cover ones for low end and mid end PCs. So therefore, make sure to check that one out afterwards as well.